Hey, welcome back to Survival Preparedness for Beginners. And on today's video, we got some exciting stuff to talk about today. Now, stay with me here. Now, I've had a few people in my community that have approached me through uh, my uh, channel on YouTube and they asked me if I could do a video on CPAP machines. Now, I know nothing about CPAP machines, so let's get a little quote disclaimer out real quick. I'm not a doctor, I'm not a medical professional, all right? This is just some of the, the um, information that I have found online that I'm gonna cover. If you have any problems or questions, or if you need additional information or something like that, you may want to contact your doctor and find out what he or she tells you to do. Um, with that being said, let's get going. Now, I did print off a lot of different information because I do not know too much about CPAP machines. I did have a friend um, that did wear one and uh, when we would go camping, he would bring it and he hooked it up to his car battery and he ran it that way, uh, which worked out most of the time okay. There was a few times where it run his battery did, you know, we had to give him a jump start. But, you know, we'll talk more about that in a little while. Now, one of the biggest things was a lot of people wanted to know information about, you know, like a battery backup system or what they, you know, they might need and that type of situation. So we're going to get to all that type of information. At the very end of this, I did some research. I've got some figures for you. I got numbers as far as prices and what I think would probably be one of your best bets. Now, let's get rolling on what a CPAP machine is. Now I have to put the spectacles on. Okay, <clears throat> just so everybody knows, a CPAP machine works by blowing air through the throat via a mask. So you wear a mask and it blows the air down your throat. All right, increases the air pressure in the throat and prevents the airway from narrowing. All right, the machine offers several benefits such as reduced daytime fatigue, improved focus, lower blood pressure, and lower risk of heart disease and other med medical conditions. Excuse me. So, <clears throat> with that being said, all right, the average price that I have found on CPAP machines runs anywhere between $500 and $3,000. You know, they have the, the beginners like, you know, level, and then they have the Mac Daddy, okay? Um, the, the basic average estimated price uh, from what I gathered was about $850. But I did also notice that if you are going to have to purchase a CPAP machine, or if you have one, it looks like most insurance do cover uh, the prices of those machines and they also cover the parts supplies such as your mask hose filters and tubing Okay, so that could be a savings for you there as long as you do have insurance uh, One of the main things that I did find is uh, So you want to make sure that in your survival preps for your CPAP machine is you have cleaning supplies Because what I found was is cleaning this thing is very very important. All right, that's like number one besides having some way to operate it as far as a battery backup that we're gonna to get to in just a little while, all right? So if you just have a mild um, disc detergent with ammonia free and you fill up your sink or whatever you may have with some warm water and you just swirl all those parts around in there and let them soak for a good five minutes at least, you rinse them really well and you just hang them all up and they'll dry and you're good to go for the next night. So cleaning is a big, big, big thing, all right? If you don't properly clean your CPAP machine, these germs and allergens can cause you to get very ill from sinus infections, pneumonia, and more. So you have to trust your sense of smell. If it smells moldy or mildewy, um, there's something wrong there. Uh, don't put it on and don't wear it, all right? So, you know, in your survival gear for your CPAP machine, you wanna make sure that you have some way to clean this thing because, you know, it, it it just holding the bacteria and stuff in there and you don't want that all right <clears throat> now some of the things that i also did find with your cpap machine um your mask should be replaced every three months uh the cushion and stuff that goes around your face and um the nasal pillow it's uh, all part of the whole system right there 
uh, that should be replaced twice a month. Um, your mask, your the, the mask headgear and chin straps and stuff should be replaced every six months. Uh, the tubing and stuff should be replaced every three months. Uh, but you may want to make sure that you do have some of those things on hand because from what I found was is the tubing is something that can get kinked or if it gets pinched or something and gets a little pinhole, it just throws the whole machine off and you're not going to get the proper airflow that you're supposed to have. Um, your humidifier water chamber should be replaced every six months. So these are some of the parts and stuff that you may want to keep on hand just in the chance that you don't know, you know, the last time you changed it, you could have to change it again, say, in, you know, a month or so, and then something majorly happens and you don't have the parts, you have no way to order them or whatever else. So you may want to make sure that you do have some of these parts. And I do have some prices on some of these, which are pretty well, pretty cheap and would be nice to have in your emergency supply kit for your CPAP machine, which includes, you know, your mass parts, filters, your tubing, solutions to make sure that everything stays clean, uh, humidifier parts, machine parts, and all that kind of stuff, all right? Now, another question that was also asked besides the battery backup was the fact that what happens if I don't have distilled water? Now, you're supposed to use distilled water in all these CPAP machines that I did look at, and I looked at a lot, all right? So they all call for distilled water. Now, one thing to remember is, uh, you can go to Walmart, you can buy distilled water by the gallon for 78 cents a gallon, and as long as you store it in a cool, dry place, it will last indefinitely, okay? And it's just, uh, basic knowledge it's just like your regular water and everything else so if you do have a CPAP machine you want to make sure you know figure out how much water you use per night base that off of a gallon and then do your math and figure out what you need say for at least a two-week supply at the minimum all right so just kind of like your food and and your water and your emergency supplies and everything else you know you want a basic two-week supply this is no different and this is keeping you alive and making you sleep and controlling anything else that could be going on. All right, so something that you can substitute your distilled water for is mineral water. That is the first um, alternative to the, the distilled water, all right? Spring water is second, all right? Deionized water, which is uh, to the type of an H2O that it doesn't have any ions or minerals in it. Okay, uh, that's the third, and Amosis purified water is um, the fourth. All right, so mineral water, spring water, deionized water, and Osmos uh, purified water. I'll spit it out in a second. Okay, <clears throat> now I did notice that there were questions um, when I was on some of these websites looking at these machines and stuff that people asked. And this was one of the number one questions that they asked, okay? Boiling water, can I use it, all right? And this is what they answer, all right? Boiling water is simply water that has reached a boiling point, usually within a few minutes. Distilled water has all of its impurities removed, including minerals and microorganisms. Boiled water is free from microorganisms, but still contains mineral salts like calcium, which you need to stay away from, all right? Now, if something happened and you didn't have any distilled water, you didn't have any of those other waters, okay? These companies do say, and this comes right from CPAP.com, these companies do say that you can use um, tap water in the chamber for at least one to two nights, tops, no more than that, okay? And if you're not so sure about the tap water, like if it smells funny or you know, because everybody has all different types of water and everything. So you want to make sure if that's the case, they suggest that you don't use the humidifier at all. Okay. Now let's start getting down to your battery backups. Now this was a tricky one because, you know, a lot of people don't want to spend a lot of money. So I did some research and stuff on Amazon and everything else. And I did find some really good deals that I'm going to tell you about. I don't know how long they're going to last for. So this may be something that you may want to um, really look into right now because there's some really good deals out there, okay? So one of the questions that I had to find was how many amps does a CPAP draw, okay? 
if you have it set at 20 cm water pressure setting okay a cpap machine that draws 4 point amperes needs 36 amp hours in an 8 hours all right so your battery should be at least 54 amper hour with this your machine can support one night of sleep all right that's just one night now another question was uh, from CPAP.com when I went into the questions and the answers they asked if you could run it on a car battery which I kind of already knew the answer to that because of my buddy but it says the modern CPAP uh, machine can run off of a car battery for at least eight hours but be careful you don't get stuck with a dead battery all right you might want to get a secondary battery they suggest a deep cycle marine or a recreational vehicle battery a deep cycle marine battery would probably be really good and they start at about 400 bucks and then you have to have the charging kit that goes with it all right so that is an expensive way but it's also an, a, an alternative that you could do all right so the average CPAP machine draws between 30 and 60 uh, watts per hour okay now all these machines are all different they all draw different wattages so you'd have to figure out what machine you have and figure out your watts and everything else all right um, now I was a little reluctant at first because I'm not a medical professional like I said in the very beginning and um, I want to make sure that I got some really good information out there that's why I went over what I did go over just before I just want to clarify that right now so I'm gonna adjust my camera and we're gonna talk about some battery backups all right so what we have here is this is a rock pile okay 300 300 watts 280 watts per uh, watt hours it's a 12 volt 24 volt DC it weighs 7.3 pounds it supports pass-through charging and it can run your CPAP machine for four nights on one charge and this is on Amazon for $270 okay I have mine I love it and because it can do so much it could run your CPAP machine it can charge your cell phones it can do so many different things and um, it's just a great overall I believe inexpensive way you get four nights out of this and as you can see let me move this in for you you know it has it has your USB ports it has your where you can just plug right in these are your charging ports you have a 12 volt here and then on the very back <clears throat> you have an input for your your DC 12 volt or 24 volt and you can plug it into the wall and charge it comes with a little handle does have lights blind the camera there and it's a great little thing all right so in an emergency situation this I would believe would be one of your your best bets all right now right back here this is the rock pile 100 watt solar panel okay I have one um, <clears throat> it folds right out it has all the cords it'll charge anything all right it's 100 watt you hang it right up boom right out in the Sun and even on a shady day and everything else you plug it into this and it'll charge it right up for you and it would also charge your cell phones and your laptops or anything like that okay the cool thing with this right now is okay is right now on Amazon this is 209 all right they have a $30 off coupon right now all right so it brings it down to $189 that's a very good deal on this right here all right now <clears throat> Some of the things that you may want to make sure that you have, and you can get them right on Amazon, they're very cheap, um, is like I talked to you before, is your extra hose for your CPAP machine, and you can get those starting at $8.99 and up. Uh, your mask cushions and stuff, they start at $22 and up. Your filters for your system, they start at $10 and up. All right, <clears throat> now there is uh, some other battery backup alternatives here. All right, there's one, it's called um, Pexis. It's a 300 watt power station, 230 watt an hour. All right, Amazon has that right now. It almost looks like this. All right, it's just a different make. And they have it for $199.98 and they have a $40 off coupon on it. 
for $159.98. Now, depending on what um, ampage and watts your CPAP machine is, this is going to run it for at least three nights. Okay, so you can get that for $159.98. Um, Snug Max, 200 watt. It's a Type C port. For CPAP machines okay it looks a little bit different and um, this is made really for CPAP machines but it does do some other things uh, right now they have those for $189 with a $20 off coupon which brings it down to $169 now when I was on CPAP.com they do sell these um, battery backups they have a ResMed Power Station 2 it's the battery only and you have to buy other things that go with it but that starts at four hundred and seventy five dollars and that is only good for one night they also have um, it is the XT fit CPAP machine it's a travel edition at which it uses I guess less power from what I figured out um, but those start at $249 and I don't know if that was uh, covered under your insurance or not because it did say to contact your insurance before purchasing to make sure it was covered. So I think that's kind of like a little additive, you know, uh, addition to having a regular CPAP machine. Um, Renogy also makes a 100 watt solar panel. All right. So it goes along with this, only it's not collapsible. So it is 42 inches high, it's 20 inches wide. It does come with all the cables and everything else. It's $103.44 right now on Amazon. Uh, the, the problem with that is, is if you had to leave in an emergency situation or something like that, uh, that's gonna be pretty difficult to um, travel with. So my advice for the money if you're gonna spend the money, if you go with this for $270, all right, you're gonna get four nights right off the bat. And if you get one of these right now for $189, you know, this will charge this plus anything else that you have that can plug into here. So as long as you can keep charging this, which you'll do through your solar panel here with all the cords and stuff, and I've done a video on this, um, and showed everybody how it works so if you take and you can keep your battery backup charged in the long run this is going to be your best bet for your money so i hope this answered a lot of questions out there on cpap machines and what you may need to have an emergency situation so let's recap that real quick all right besides having some type of a battery backup to get something that's going to hold more than two nights, you know, two to four nights, you know, you're going to spend anywhere between, you know, two to three hundred dollars. All right. So you might as well bite the bullet and get something good that's going to give you at least four nights. And like I said, you can figure that out. You want to make sure that you have your extra supplies in your emergency supply kit for your CPAP machine, which includes your hoses and any of your mass parts, your filters. You also want to make sure that you have your cleaning material because that is very important to make sure that that is stays clean. And you want to make sure that you keep everything nice and clean wherever it is you may have to go, okay? So in recapping all this, I really appreciate people reaching out and asking me to do a video that is a little out of my zone. Um, I tried to do the best I could like I said, I'm not a medical professional or a doctor, and I just wanted to try to get these people some information that they were looking for. So if you have any questions, or if you have any comments, or if you have a video you would like to see me do, and if you'd like to give me a little time to do some research on it, reach out to me. Put it in the comments below. Until next time, survival preparedness, catch you on the flip side.